Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Tuesday the 31st of October. Now, I wasn't planning really on covering the public inquiry into COVID in the United Kingdom, but friends in the United States and Canada have said, John, you're so lucky to be getting a public inquiry. And I guess in a sense we are. And when I've actually started watching this, it is actually quite interesting. There was a quite a forensic analysis of what has happened. And basically what we're seeing is a litany of mismanagement and disaster, in my view, and perhaps most concerning of all, concealment of information throughout the pandemic. If we'd been given all the information at the time that we weren't allowed at the time, um, things could have been very much better and very much different. Not so much because I could have reviewed it, but scientists around the world could have reviewed it. And we have a, a sort of a saying that two heads are better than one and the uh, the views of a million scientists have got to be better than the views of uh, half a dozen scientists, I would have thought. But anyway, let's just look at some of the points now and we'll look at some video as well. So this is it here. It's on YouTube. It's live streamed. Now, this is live streamed every day, so it's pretty good. Now, if you actually go to that site there, it won't be there now because that's the live stream site. But they put the videos up from the previous day on quite a regular basis. So it's really pretty, pretty open and pretty transparent. Uh, and there it all is. Um, now, remarkably low numbers of people, 10.8 thousand subscribers, quite incredible. Um, only just under 11,000 watching. And uh, this is actually on the official YouTube site, warning occasional strong language from many parts of the evidence. Now, um, personally, I would rather have a colourful language that's honest than um, polite language that's dishonest. I'm sure we've all been in meetings with people that are oh so polite, but they're actually having a pretty aggressive go at you as they go along. Uh, anyway, let, let, let's look at some of the material here. Now, Dominic Cummings, uh, one, of the, one of the Prime Minister's chief advisors, talking about his colourful language. Um, he said, a thousand times worse than my language was the underlying insanity of the situation in Number 10, which of course is Number 10 Downing Street, the the Prime Minister's uh, home and office in the United Kingdom. Start of 2020, UK's first national lockdown considered a completely crazy idea. People were preconceptual at that time that this could happen, and perhaps with some good reason we could say with hindsight, but that's unfair because th these people were working at the time. Uh, no way uh, there would be national restrictions could be introduced into Britain was the feeling at the time, uh, early 2020. Strict border controls uh, on China uh, and more testing would have been a much better idea than lockdown. Now, I completely agree with this. And in early 2020, when the World Health Organization was saying carry on flying in and out of China, I was actually saying, no, we need to stop flights in and out of China. And the Chinese did actually compartmentalize the whole pandemic. They did suppress it for a long period of time. What we didn't know then was that there was a ready transmission at a much earlier stage than we had thought. So given the information we had at the time, I agree with Dominic Cummins, it would have been right to suspend flights from China. But um, based on the World Health Organization's thinking, largely in, in my view, uh, that didn't happen because they said carry on. I mean, it's almost as if they were mates with some of the leaders of the World Health Organization. But, but uh, of course, we can't possibly um, know that. That would have been much better. So I agree with that. Uh, D Dominic Cummings uh, talking to uh, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, of course, uh, talking about the Secretary of State for Health, uh, unfit for his job, according to Mr Cummings. Now, of course, this is Mr Cummings' view. He might be, uh, he might be somewhat subjective in this, but uh, hang on, there is evidence. Um, what's that message on May the 7th? Uh, Dominic Cummings said, Han Hancock is unfit for this job. The incompetence, constant lies, obsession with media bullshit, overdoing his job. Still no fucking serious testing in care homes. His uselessness is still killing God knows how many. Um, apologies for the language, but this is what was written. Um, this is one of the things that's been such a tragedy about this, the deaths in care homes. Now, I've been talking to registered nurses working in care homes um, at the time. 2020, uh, doctors were doing consultations over mobile phones. It's laughable. On the result of those consultations, they were prescribing end-of-life drugs like midazolam, like morphine. And these were being given to people who had COVID infections. And in the views of the registered nurses I've been talking to, so many of these people 
in retrospect, could have survived. It's a complete national disgrace what has happened and uh, let's hope there's some pretty thorough research being done on this. Now, there is going to be a module. Is a module the right word? I'm not quite sure what they would call it. What are they calling it? It's, it's part four of this inquiry. Um, so something like mod- module four of this inquiry, where, where they're actually going to look at um, the therapeutics and the vaccine. So we're going to be watching that really quite carefully. How honest that will be remains to be seen. Um, but let, let's wait and see. Um <sighs> This morning, you must ask him. This, this, this is this. This is the prime minister must ask Matt, Matt Hancock when we're going to get the testing sorted. That when we're going to get a half a million tests per day, as would planned. Dominic Cummings also says, consistent with what I've just said, uh, vulnerable people, amongst uh, or almost appallingly neglected in lockdown decisions. One of the most appalling things: lack of shielding plan. And the cabinet office was trying to block us creating a shielding plan. Now, I stress this is the view of Mr. Cummings, but he thinks the cabinet office, those, I don't know who they are really. I guess it's the civil servants and the cabinet were, were trying to to block a shielding plan. Uh, why I can't see why they would possibly want to not protect people. Um, but many people, I believe, died partly through administration of drugs that needn't have died and of course this is just um the the, the, the hope this really comes out in the inquiry the research research really needs to be done about the lack of the vulnerable being protected and, and, and drugs that were given that need not have been given um going on um latest message to the prime minister from cummings uh the latest message of the Prime Minister from Dominic Cummings. You need to think about timing of binning Hancock. That means getting rid of the Secretary of State for Health. Just quite incredible. There's no way this guy can stay. He's lied his way through and killed people. And dozens of dozens of people have seen it, is the view of uh, Mr Cummings. Now let me just... I'm not making this... Let me let me show you a clip because this is just it's just too incredible. And, and my sense of disillusionment in the system is so overwhelming. It's tantamount to grief that we talked about this and we made decisions based on this level of information. Let's just listen to a clip uh, now for, from, from, this, uh, from this inquiry. See, in relation to assertions as to what was being done to protect the care home sector, what was being done to ramp up testing and what was being done to get inadequate supplies of PPE. Yes, multiple officials, including Mr. Shinner uh, and uh, an excellent uh, private secretary, Alexandra Burns, raised issues with me that they thought that um, what was being said in the morning meetings about those issues was not accurate. And I tried to convey this to the PM uh, as, as to, uh, to be fair to him, but also, uh, as Mark said, well, the cabinet secretary did. Could we have 48313, page 16? This is an extract from your letter to the inquiry dated the 7th of May. You say that Mr. Hancock is unfit for this job, the incompetence, the constant lies, the obsession with media bullshit over doing his job. Still no fucking serious testing in care homes. His uselessness is still killing God knows how many. This morning, you, are you addressing this to Mr. Johnson? Yes. Must ask him when we will get to 500,000. Is that tests per day? And where is your plan for testing all care home workers weekly? Yes. If you could go, please, the bottom of, scroll out and go to the bottom of that page and then scroll in on the last entry. You need to think through timing of binning Hancock. There's no way the guy can stay. He's lied his way through this and killed people and dozens and dozens of people have seen it. Was it around this time, in fact, on the 15th of May, that Mr Hancock said that we've tried to throw a protective ring around our care homes? Uh, I believe so. You, you've, you have the date. I'm sure you're right. And was it around this time, therefore, that in number 10 there was repeated consideration to the issue of sacking Mr Hancock? Yes, and I also had complaints uh, from officials to me qu- qu- entirely uh, rightly. The Cabinet Secretary said to me himself, the British system does not work if ministers lie at the Cabinet table, and, and you have to convey this to the, to the PM. 
I think the Cabinet Secretary was completely right. There was only so much that he could do. This was fundamentally a political matter, uh, and I did what I could. This is an email between yourself, I think Helen McNamara and others dated the 13th of March. We'll leave that there. It does go on to uh, other topics. I actually found that, um, I just found myself thinking about the individual lives that had been lost really when I heard that. A protective ring around our care homes. So the Secretary of State for Health said he'd thrown a protective ring around our care homes. Um, Mr Cummings didn't think he did and judging by the amount of people that died in our care homes I suspect Mr Cummings is more right than Mr Hancock it's been a national well, I don't know it's, it's, it's just appalling in my view now I'm not saying that the UK is particularly bad I think things that were just as bad happened in many other countries um, it's just that it's being brought to light in the United Kingdom let's let's go on a little bit um so uh, so what Ma what's that message from mark said well the senior civil servant again consistent with um dominic cummings fast losing confidence Han in hancock's candor as well as grip there we go um anyway culture of secrecy is another thing dominic cummings said there was a culture of secrecy in the cabinet office blocked scientific advisory group for emergencies minutes were blocked now we know that these new regulations that are coming in from the world health organization that's probably going to be rubber stamped by countries around the world it seems to me a big part of those is to block information you see we have lots of brilliant people around the world and i want them i want them the sort of people we've been talking to on this channel, the people like Professor Robert Clancy, like Professor Gustav Gleisch, Dr. Claire Craig, Professor Norman Fenton. We've got brilliant people around the world like this. I want them to be able to analyse all this information objectively, honestly, without a vested interest and give us their view. I don't want it to be a few select esoteric people in the high priesthood that tell the rest of us riffraff what to do big part of the problem in my view um minutes were blocked according to mr cummins i also had the very strong view that sage minutes and other documents should be made public in early february for scrutiny well of course public scrutiny we're not as stupid as we look i struggle with many things but we've got many i've got many friends who aren't why isn't this open to public scrutiny? And uh, Patrick Vallance, Chief Scientific Officer, completely agreed. Unfortunately, again, the culture secret the culture of security in the Cabinet Office blocked that. Not just in February, March, but blocking it. I can't remember how long, a very long time. So we have this culture of secrecy that seems to be a big part of the problem. And I think I'll just play you one other clip um, that I think I've got here. Let me just see if I can get this up now. It's one other uh, video. Really made things incredibly stark because you suddenly had these two completely divergent sets of graphs, one from the NHS and one from the COBRA system. By the 11th of March, was it generally well understood in Downing Street that a large percentage, a large proportion of this disease for the viral spread, in fact, was transmitted asymptomatically? It was, uh, and Mr. Hancock had made this point in multiple ways. Um, uh, and sowed chaos by, by saying this. He was repeatedly told by Patrick Vallance that what he was saying was wrong, but he kept saying it, he said it here. And if you notice, it makes its way into statements that have been provided to this inquiry. So this, this false meme uh, lodged itself in crucial people's minds. Uh, I don't understand, never understood why Hancock said this, but Patrick Vallance made extremely clear to me and to others in number 10, that what Hancock was saying was factually wrong. We can see Mr Johnson said, you speak of briefings from Team Carey. Okay, Is we'll that a reference that, uh, to the allegation? We'll that leave that bit there. As I say, this, this, this does go on for quite, a, for quite a few hours. So Patrick Vallance, Chief Scientific Officer, had told Matt Hancock, look, you do get asymptomatic spread, but he was still writing that you don't. I mean, it's just, you really couldn't make it up. 
asymptomatic, pre-symptomatic spread. So there we go. Um, just quite incredible. Um, the ineptitude at the highest levels of government. And as I say, I'm, I'm sure the UK is no uh, worse than other governments. But this is the one we have a bit of a, a, a peephole into. Um, now, if you live in Canada, you'll probably never know this because as far as I know, there's no public inquiry that you had to have your own personal citizen inquiry, which, which we've covered on this channel. Um, so, so a lot of areas, this will probably be uh, kept quiet forever. But in the UK, we do have v vestiges of, of uh, transparency in the UK. We'll, we'll see what, what comes out from this. And uh, it really concerns me that um, there's this lack of this culture of security and secrecy, which does seem to be does seem to be getting worse. And with the pandemic as well, it wasn't just the UK. There seemed to have been this sort of international folly a deux where people were just following. Me. Folly a deux is a, a psychiatric thing. So you get one person who's got psychiatric symptoms and then the person living with them develops the same psychiatric symptoms, but they don't have the, the psychiatric disease. They're just kind of copycatting the, the person they're living with. And was there quite a bit of that internationally in the pandemic? Uh, perhaps. But that's a little bit of the... Uh, disillusionment uh, with my country's uh, system and response um, that I just wanted to share. And um, this, of course, in my view, has completely destroyed public trust in government, which is a pity. We'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.